I, I oh, it record. may have stopped when the host switched. I'm recording on my computer, so it's okay. Okay, then can you just send it to us once? You got it. it. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so, um, and then what we are providing, um, obviously, is the property management uh, software solution uh, we, with a specific target to include all size portfolios from small uh, on up to thousands of, of uh, you know, units uh, per, per portfolio. So, uh, and it doesn't matter property managers or individual self-managing landlords, we kind of try to, to uh, grab them all. That's kind of what we felt was missing um, uh, when we did our research, when I did my research years ago. Um, so I had mentioned earlier that I had started uh, looking for some good PM software. Um, I had less than 50 units at the time. Uh, and so, <clears throat> so because of budget and uh, limited features, that's, what, that's why we kind of came out with uh, the properties are um, solution. Uh, we've been uh, in the technology business for 18 years plus now. Um, so we, we're, we're well seasoned. Um, we have customers uh, all across the U.S., but also um, as a repeat, what I was saying earlier, we're in a couple other countries, Nairobi, Kenya, Saudi Arabia, and we got some more in the works um, that we're working on now. So um, so that, that's, uh, that's why we came out with um, the product that we came out with to try to fit, fill a need. Um, and there was a, more needs such as, uh, especially for the smaller portfolios um, that we also met too. And we'll cover that on some of the other slides, kind of what sets us apart. And those were uh, some of the reasons why we did it as well. So, so um in on our entire setup today was property management through this crisis. That was kind of our focus. Um, so today we're here about to talk about properties are the current industry that we support uh, along with the current events and the effects of co the COVID-19 pandemic. And as everybody knows here, uh, nobody's able to meet, work, shop, or socialize like they used to. Um, and the working world really just moved rapidly from business as usual to cautious travel. We've got office closures and um, all of these new work from home mandates. Um, at this time, we're all facing like a lot of these challenges and, and making these adjustments within property management. And our responsibility within real estate management has absolutely seen reform in response to all of these events. Um, and the series of industry disruptions has definitely prompted results and responses of what may be permanent changes to the industry after this crisis. So really what we'll be going through um, is focusing on navigating through property management uh, during a disruption like this one. Um, so kind of what we'll, uh, it's going to be going through is like the effects of operations here, the impact we've seen so far, uh, you know, how it's affecting the industry here. Uh, we'll follow up with how property management is responding to uh, this, what rules and solutions have been implemented, and then where we mix into this, you know, how we can provide the support property manager mergers need, you know, in this type of uh, situation here. So, what we have set up here um, are a series of effects that we're seeing, you know, hitting owners and managers alike. Um, right now, we're mitigating health risks. Um, owners and managers are having to make sure their employees, tenants, and end users are safe here. Um, they're making hard decisions on things like closures, um, all for the security and safety of their properties, associates, and tenants. Um, this is very important um, because of how you choose to operate in times like these uh, really impact, you know, tenant retention, referral, review, and uh, if you are a property manager, uh, your owner-manager relationship being able to be reliable for them in times like these. Um, social distancing, of course, uh, what's affected us, uh, you know, probably most dramatically um, has really, in addition to just physical pro proximity, we have managers, uh, you know, just regular business needs totally going out the window when you're looking at things like person-to-person -person business. We're uh, out there giving showings, uh, doing paper leases, connecting with these people, choosing to move into these homes, and at this time, we're limited. Um, at, at also, operating income, which is probably uh, everyone's biggest concern. Uh, you know, many asset owners and operators are facing this drastically reduced operating income. Uh, 
almost all are pretty nervous about tenants and commercial leases struggling to make payments. Uh, we're seeing a lot of the effects in collections and having to address tenant hardships while trying to retain a consistent cash flow. So how do you reinforce, that, then reinforce this and get your tenants to prioritize the rental and lease agreements that you've set in place? Um, in the event that rent is actually being received, the collection options have also been limited or delayed. These payment methods, you know, with uh, these traditional payment methods that uh, you see a lot of smaller end uh, users check money orders, the deposit processes have slowed down or um, potentially have been accessible for location deposits. So uh, the cash flow has definitely seen a hit here as well. The tenant and property care here. So um, after the effects of cash flow, we're definitely faced with making sure we're maintaining the physical care of the property and of course the tenant needs while maintaining the health and mandates of social distancing. This is of course very hard, you know, completing work orders. Um, so how are people addressing work orders and assuring property care in addition to uh, making sure distancing for your vendors and service servicemen is taken care of. Um, something also to consider while we're trying to get maintenance and servicemen to work with, the business hours and availability have been limited there as well. So the last thing that we'll kind of go over is communications. Um, really tying all of this together and moving through these obstacles comes with being able to connect to all of these parties um, that you're working with, your employees, your tenants, your end users to assure this compliance. So whether it's in health or in operations, the effects of coronavirus really require us to implement the series of new adjustments that need to be made um, and by reinforcing these, connecting with uh, everybody, you know, whether it's emailing or sending notices in offices. So our next step here is how are people responding to this? What are these, uh, you know, effects causing, uh, uh, you know, property managers to adapt to? Um, so what we see here is a whole rainbow of issues that the property industry is seeing here um, and how are they responding? So most real estate managers began with decisions that protected the safety and health, uh, whether that was, you know, disinfecting. We'll go to this slide here. This is actually something that I pulled, um, and, and it was an overview of property manager's response. Um, there's a lot of information here. Uh, we won't go through all of this, but it's basically just uh, delegating, uh, you know, excess uh, reinforcements to assure safety, whether it's disinfecting, cleaning more often, uh, closing down amenities uh, or common areas, things like that. Outside of that, we'll kind of go down that line to address all of the issues, uh, you know, uh, what really the main response that we've seen while establishing all of our new individual crisis standard of procedures, uh, one of the biggest responses was the industry implementation of digital systems. So relatively few real estate companies were actively developing or pursuing these digitally like advanced strategies for this pandemic. But uh, what we've really seen is it's highlighted uh, the need for mobile technology, being able to maintain your operations and business continuity. So moving to digital strategies can really help with, you know, tenant attraction uh, and churn. We've got, you know, uh, thinking of the lease negotiations, uh, asset valuation, and improved tenant experience while maintaining full function of your operations. So, um, while the COVID-19 uh, crisis has really like accelerated the need for these strategic changes, um, but the events have really been a catalyst to the way we think of property management and uh, operational consistency. So as we mentioned before, it's more important than ever right now to limit this personal contact. So when that's your business, what do you do next? In this case, we had mentioned specifically onboarding. Uh, you know, when people are committing to a home or, you know, business location, providing that positive oncoming experience is absolutely essential. We've got the industry's digital response, uh, seeing great promise in upholding positive tenant interaction here. Uh, we're offering them self-service options available on their time. We may be in a digital age where online listings uh, help home buyers find the great opportunity uh, at a great price on a listing database, uh, but that's not the only way that technology is really changing this real estate game uh, from rent and vacancy to tracking to, uh, contracts. In this case, we see electronic documents in and things like that. Uh, showings have moved, moved to online virtual tours or um, the leasing has moved completely paperless to electronic documents. 
we'll move next to operating income. So uh, we have a lot of different options here that uh, implementing digital systems uh, will allow you to do. The cash flow, you know, we've seen has hit many owners and property managers alike in many different ways. Uh, the interaction between your tenants and the owner's uh, payments should really be reliable, uh, even in the most uncertain circumstances as we're in right now. The real estate management software solutions really help you maintain and organize these payments, these tenants, and, and definitely much more. Uh, we have like, I guess, using these advanced management tools is a reliable start as it assists with mm, tracking rent payments, general ledgers, and can give you visual uh, statuses by providing you reports and for like the financial health of your properties here. Uh, what we're offering is automated functions like uh, auto billing and auto late fee calculations for delinquent tenants. Um, while in times like this, we're seeing a great industry response to property managers actually, you know, doing what they can to ease the stress and struggles of what tenants may be going through, uh, but by like temporarily waiving late fees and working on them by a case by case basis, property managers are adapting. So it's a uh, important to have these things monitored, recorded, and the ability to review these at, you know, at any record time. The next, uh, you know, effect that we had seen was the inability to take care of our tenants uh, are really seeing uh, limitations there. Um, so it's critical that the property managers keep buildings and utilities uh, in operating condition. Uh, so tenants find value and, uh, and comfort in their homes or businesses. Um, with this application, uh, you know, residents really have the opportunity to do things like submitting work orders, uh, assign uh, and track schedules for important maintenance um, and really emphasizes the importance of that manager tenant relationship without having those face to face, op face options that we don't have access to right now. So the last run of really what we'll be going through, um, making sure I didn't miss anything here um, before we hit communication. Communication is really what's going to be upholding everything that you would set in, in place uh, to uh, assist with all of these adjustments in the crisis. Um, in this case, relaying and connecting information is just an essential part of this business. Uh, in the midst of the crisis, we're really, you know, regulating new ways of business, and it's crucial to communicate this effectively and easily uh, to provide the best practices. Um, there's a couple different things that digital solutions offer um, to ensure the safety and compliance, you know, being able to enforce those things, um, you know, mass communications, being able to uh, reach out to your tenants, uh, maybe vendors for quoting on maintenances, seeing if they're available, um, or even communications to your owners is why there's maybe a, a lower uh, operating income for whatever the cases may be at the time. Um, then we also have uh, logged ab the ability to keep a logged history of all communications. So whether you were making negotiations with uh, tenants uh, based on crisis needs or, you know, delaying rents, avoiding late fees, things like that, um, you'll be able to, uh, you know, see records of those. So going digital definitely uh, is, is a big improvement to the way management has been seen through this crisis. So we have, uh, you know, really the events have created a sense of urgency for us to digitize and provide a better uh, more distinctive tenant customer experience, I guess. Uh, some other direct results that we're really seeing in the outbreak really include the need to meaning, meaningfully engage with the customers and, and employees on these health and, and physical distance needs. Um, real estate owners and operating, operators are across like every asset class are considering several potential longer term effects of the coronavirus outbreak and the required changes altogether to meet more intensive operational uh, requirements. So in all of this, where we come in, um, we are here to offer all of the system needs and digital solutions that I've listed here today. We also have the ability to save time and money. Um, property management software lessens labor costs and time spent doing day-to-day -day tasks, uh, you know, with automation and workflows. Um, 
the ability to automate tasks is also a secure way to be more efficient. I think of these as, you know, automation processes can eliminate a lot of manual mistakes and streamline tasks to assure efficiency in completing the steps within each of our like processes. Um, and then lastly, within all of this, uh, we're here to reduce your resources, consolidate uh, your property management needs. Um, you know, property management, real estate management, it's definitely a job with many hats. So uh, properties are what we're here to do to offer and show you today is uh, everything that you need consolidated in one spot from initial tenant onboarding to automated listings when they leave. Um, so with all of this limited communication, uh, where we come in is offering a consolidated platform. Um, so that is my overview, kind of what we've seen. Um, and one of the biggest solutions was going digital as far as the response. And that is definitely been a bonus for us at Properties Are. Uh, Keith is going to review our product and show you kind of where we fit in. Um, in addition to offering uh, the solutions that I showed you in each of these key slides here, um, he's going to show you actually, you know, a firsthand view into our software and give you guys a little bit more information there. So I'm going to pass the torch here and stop share. And then I'm going to. Okay. You can actually keep sharing if you want to go through some of those screens. Oh, sure. That's and right. Then we'll, We're going to we'll, do that. We'll flip that back when I show the product and I'll fair enough that's right okay all right so again our product Keith's going to run through what separates us our tools and overall features and then give you an understanding of our packages and pricing that for ranges of portfolios so all right all right so what separates us um, I kind of gave you guys early uh, conversation about some of the how we got started and what, what I think separates us as far as what we were looking for that we couldn't find. But uh, some of the key things to note is um, we are multi-language on our software. Um, and so you, we can add any language, but currently we have French, Chinese, Spanish, of course, English, um, and people request things in different languages and uh, we can put those in. So even the mobile apps, the tenant app, uh, the vendor app, uh, they can switch that to Spanish if you get tenant uh, tenants that are Spanish speaking or Chinese. That was one, the latest one we added. Uh, so um, <clears throat> that's one thing that we have. Uh, QuickBooks integration. That was a big deal. Um, so many of the smaller landlords, in, individual self-managing, were using Excel, as Kelsey alluded to earlier. Uh, they'd use Excel, they'd use QuickBooks, and use a combination of things to manage their portfolios. So we have a full integration into QuickBooks. So even though Properties R has a full accounting system, you don't have to use ours. You can use QuickBooks if, if, if you, know, you so choose. Um, and so when you create a lease in Properties R, it'll create the invoices in, in, um, in QuickBooks. When tenants pay through the mobile app that we provide, when they pay their, pay, uh, their bill, uh, or vendors submit a bill, um, then it all will feed directly into QuickBooks, right? So that's another unique thing. I don't know that any other property management soft company is doing that. Uh, of course, affordability will show you the task. I mean, our plans here shortly, but it starts as low as $25. And that's really for the really small portfolios. Um, and then we offer credit reporting. Uh, some are now starting to do that, but we do offer credit reporting. Uh, tenants can build up their credit. It's a, also a way for you to, to uh, if you want to upcharge it, you can and, and kind of offset the price of, uh, of the properties are. Okay. The <clears throat> some of the key features we, I, I actually had to break this up into two two pages. So this is the first page. Um, uh, I'll just kind of qu quickly go over it with you uh, for sake of time. But of course, electronic payments. So uh, everything's electronic. You can pay. Um, the, the tenants can pay, but you can also pay the owners. If you're a property manager, you can also pay the vendors. The vendors can submit bills to you all electronically. We can have uh, custom form letters. We have a lot in there now, but if you have one, we can put that in, uh, whether it's fiction letters, notice of rent increase, and so on. We offer concierge services for your new tenants that come come in. They'll they'll help and it's totally free for you it's totally free for the tenants there's no charge for that uh so they could get help setting up their utilities uh, forwarding their mail buying insurance and setting up their internet and tv and cable and stuff 
We do, of course, offer background screenings. I think most everyone does that. It can be comprehensive or you can scale down depending on what, what it is you, you need. Uh, criminal eviction, credit history um, uh, is, is the most common. Communications, like Kelsey was talking about, keeping communication, uh, especially during this COVID um, uh, period, communication is critical uh, for your tenants back and forth, whether you're delaying their payments, whether you're whatever um, um, situation you, you've, I, I'm assuming everybody's doing a case by case with their tenants as far as their commercial or residential, if they've been paying good or whether what kind of uh, um, uh, adjustments you're al allowing them to make, but communication is really the heart of it. And so in our software, we, we offer uh, SMS, text, uh, or email or both, you know, you can do both at the same time. So we keep a log file of all that. Uh, property syndication will syndicate out your properties that are available automatically. Uh, we become a va uh, vacant or will become vacant within certain days that you set. You know, you, you can start advertising 10 days before people move out. You, you, that's up to you. Okay. The, uh, we offer online applications, um, so you can post that on your website, on your personal, I mean, your, your business website, the link to the online application. They can fill it out. It feeds directly into properties are um, e-leases. If you want, we use Top Loop. I think a lot of real estate agents have been moving to Top Loop. I don't know if that's still the case, but uh, they seem to have grown, especially with Keller Williams across the country. Uh, but we used Outloop for electronic documents, for your leases, uh, custom website. We can do custom websites for you with your property listings on your website, your vacant property listings on your website. So people can, some of your applicants can go right through your website. We, with, with our software, we all also offer the four mobile apps. Uh, the tenant is an app, owner, vendor, and property inspections. Um, now, those are mobile apps, both for Android and for iPhone. But for the tenant, we also have a portal. Uh, just for to clarify, uh, an app obviously you download and install on your mobile phone or iPad, uh, tablet. Uh, a, a portal is just a web browser. You know, it's just use a. a you, so for those who don't have smartphones or don't want to, they can actually just go to a portal. Same the same features. You know, pay their bills, submit work orders, whatever. But but we do have the portal for the tenant and not the others, just for the tenant at this time. Uh, we auto calculate your late fees. Uh, you know, people are late, we'll auto calculate those. Uh, uh, that's in a property. So, if you're using QuickBooks, then you do that in QuickBooks. Okay. Uh, but either way, the feature is available no matter what accounting you do. And then um, for the custom app online application, you can create your own custom questions. If you want to ask additional questions at the time that the applicant fills out the online application, you can do so. You know, questions could be like, you know, um, have you ever been evicted? Have you ever been asked to leave? You know, not necessarily evicted. Have you? So any questions that you want to ask, um, you can certainly create your own custom questions. Okay. Um, <clears throat> these, I'm just going to show you screenshots of the mobile apps, just so you have an idea of what they look like. This is the owner app. Uh, of course, um, this is for the property owners. Uh, they'll only see their properties, their lease properties, their rent that's due to them and work orders that are pertaining to them. So it's all filtered. They don't see all your, uh, your records if you're managing for multiple owners. Uh, the next one is just additional. We just had to scroll down, but they can communicate with you through the app uh, and run some reports themselves. And then uh, the next one is the um, tenant app, and obviously this is the most uh, used, um, but the tenant app, they can see their balance. They can, there's the preferred language. They can change their language. They can pay their, uh, their bill and visa, uh, credit card, I should say, credit card or ACH. Um, buy renters insurance, that's concierge service. Submit work orders if they have a problem with their unit. They can take pictures, submit the work order. They can track their um, you know, the progress of that work order, they can communicate with you. They can look at their ledger, their financial ledger, right from their mobile app. So maybe save a phone call or two, uh, or certainly maybe a trip into the office. If you have more of an apartment complex where they walk up to the office. So a lot of this will, will can, uh, reduce the in-person uh, interaction. 
And then the next app is the inspection app. This is where you can go out as a property manager or an owner and go do your own property inspections with our app. This is all included. So you click on new and then it opens up your list of properties. You can select your property and then you can select your template that we can put in. Uh, and so you choose uh, whatever template and then it loads up the template. Um, and this is just a couple samples. So you have your, for each item, you know, you can set things as good, fair. You can do work orders right from here. So if you've got to do work order for the sink. If you need to do a camera, take a picture of the sink or for whatever reason, you could do that, take pictures. So it's a full uh, inspection. And then uh, I don't know if I'll show you a, a sample report uh, after that. This is submitting a work order. And then now we're on the vendor app. Um, yeah, that was the work order. Sorry. So they can submit a work order during the time of the inspection. So getting your list of things to fix. Okay. Then the last one is the vendor app. And that's for you know, vendors, so electricians, plumbers, maintenance people, whoever you hire out. Um, typically, they will not have a bill to pay. Typically, they will create a bill for you, for you to pay them, uh, depending on how, how you do it, if they're on your payroll or if they're just, you know, outsourced 1099. But you can... Um, uh, you can assign work orders to them and then they view work orders. They'll see what ones are assigned to them and so on. They can create a bill right from the work order and close the work order out. And it goes into your accounting, you know, whether properties are or QuickBooks. So, okay. And then uh, this is just another couple screenshots of them you know, looking at the work order. And then on the last one on the right is them submitting a bill for their, you know, for what they've done uh, on regarding that work order. And then, Again, that's why we just mentioned that it goes into the um, into the uh, QuickBooks accounting or your or properties ours accounting. Okay. Uh, the next one is just the next screen is just the um, um, is the yeah. I'm going to go over. Let me share. Yeah, you know, let me share my. Uh, you're going to make me the host. Yes. Okay. On my name, you can click on the more. Okay. You should be host now. Yep. All right, perfect. So let me share my screen. I think everybody should see my screen, right, Kelsey? Yes. All right. So this is just a dashboard. I'm not going to go into a lot of details because you know I can I can take it could take forever. It's 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 so much that we have uh, feature wise. Is it would take too long. So I'm just going to give you some quick. This is your home page. This is what we call the dashboard. You can have your own custom logo up here for your company. Uh, these are all your navigation over here on the left-hand side. Of course, this is your main dashboard, so you have a quick overview of numbers and counts, the occupancy rate, your lease is expiring, you know, that sort of thing, any late invoices here. If you're integrated with QuickBooks, if you mark as paid, it'll, of course, mark as paid in QuickBooks. Otherwise, it, it uses our own accounting system. Open work orders down here, and I've got quite a few, and, of course, this is all dummy data. Um, <clears throat> And then um, you know, we track owners coming over here on the left hand side. We track owners, buildings, um, and properties. Properties, just for terminology, people call them units or doors that we call them properties, kind of all interchangeable. But if you can lease it out, it's a property. A building you may or may not have, but that's a more of a that holds multiple properties. Um, like apartment buildings, uh, strip stores, if you own commercial strip stores, uh, malls, if you own malls, then the, where the suites would be the properties, okay? Uh, we track tenants, of course, leases, uh, the, there's a full accounting module, uh, work orders, we're tracking asset management, meaning, um, and that's terminology, I know from investors, that means one thing, and, and, and landlords may mean a little different. Assets would be wash and dryers, refrigerator, anything equipment that you own that's part of that property. You could track the warranty information. You could set reminders to change air filters, all that stuff. You can track your vendors, communicate. You can send mass communications out to everybody. I'm only going to show this to you because of the COVID kind of helps make sense. You can select all your tenants um, just by clicking that, grabbed all my tenants or select none. Uh, or you can actually filter by a building. Anybody who's in my Bradley Square Mall, it'll load up all my tenants and, and then I can select them all. Okay, I don't have anybody, I guess, in my mall. But um, so you can do it by building too and send out all the, you know, if you have no water repair, it's gonna be, water's gonna be turned off for a little while. You can, you can 
set uh, communications. You can have templates and you know, upload images and files with an email, not as so much a text on the files. Um, document management, we have documents on everywhere in the software. Task, you can task like Outlook Task, and they're also on your dashboard here, tasks that are due, anything uh, related to that. So we have a full schedule module for creating appointments and, uh, and then full reports, full report. We have a lot of reports. Um, the, all the reports are broken down by categories. So you, once you click a, a category financial reports, you have all the reports over here. You can add them to favorites. Um, so they, they say on your homepage on the accounting, uh, all your favorite financial accounting will, will be here. Okay. These are all my favorite reports, accounting reports. So, um, uh, they're uh, readily, readily available, okay? Um, and then let me show you a couple reports, what I was talking about. Um, so this is a property statistical report. This is my income expenses, my cap rates on a particular property, uh, cash on cash. Uh, so we can do graphs. We, we do, um, oh, this, is a, um, this is an appointment. This is our schedule module, by the way. I didn't close that out. So you can, you can create appointments drag it around a different, I didn't mean to do that, drag it around to different time slots and, and that sort of thing. So that was a full schedule module. These are form letters of notice of rent increase. I chose Sam Anderson. Um, he's a sample tenant and his rent increase is going to increase. And then this will fill out appropriately, you know, inside the letter. Of course, you can print this out. You can do a PDF, email it, whatever. So we do all kinds of form letters. Um, this is an owner statement. Again, you can just a quick summary of what it is for, for Kyle McCall. He owns the townhouse. It's broken down by properties. He owns a Florida condo um, and gives you your summary. So it, all the reports are nice looking, we think. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, PDF, you can send it to. Um, this is the inspection report. I told you I'd kind of show that to you. From the inspection app, uh, this was the report that it generates and it ties this to the property. So this is the, the date. I did this in January of 19, and this one was an actual one that I did do. Um, uh, gives you the information. I took the pictures of the kitchen, so and then all my kitchen uh, notes here that I that I made. Uh, then it goes through each bed, each room uh, in the template, and then you can upload pictures and whatever. So I walked through this condo, um, and then I took all the pictures that needed that I needed, um, and then made all my notes. Okay, so that's the report that is always. Um, generated with the inspection. And then when you go to your properties, um, let's just pick my property here. It loads up my property summary and that inspection report is right here under my documents. It, it attaches it here so I can always download and look at it. Okay. Email it if you need to email it to the owner or whatever. And at the end of the inspection, the app asks you, do you want to email a report while you're out on site? Do you want to email it to the owners or property managers? Um, and you can email it right from, from your mobile app while you are still there on the property, okay? Um, this is just a property summary since I'm on this. You can upload your main default picture and map it out. It's currently vacant. Uh, I can see who applied for it. I can see all the applicants. Walter Reed applied for it and I accepted his application. Uh, work orders, upload photos, property report, notes, financials, send application link if someone wants to apply for the Florida condo. I can send them the application link. Uh, quick summary, I've got one open work order, 31 closed. Um, my default rent application fee, um, you know, my description for syndication, you know. Um, so that's that's the property summary. You have tenant summary. I just pull up Sam Anderson, and then we'll kind of just open this up for, we'll finish up with some pricing plans and some Q&A. So Sam Anderson, so this is my tenant. We call them tenants. They could be, it's really based on the status. So he's current tenant, but you, you, all your tenants would be in here, whether they're former tenants, applicants rejected, that sort of thing. So even the words says tenants, it's, it's based really on status. So here's Sam, his security deposit, his ledger. You can see his ledger right on the homepage uh, on his tenant summary page. Um, any documents for, for Sam? Um, I can communicate with him, collect rent, new lease, send credentials for his mobile app, uh, work orders, or, or background screening reports, uh, order that right through here. Um, this is a list of all communications I've had with Sam. Uh, email what the subject was. Um, 
and there's a lot of automation in our software. So things like when someone makes a payment, they'll get an email notification. You'll get an email notification. When someone submits a work order through the app I'm talking about, uh, you'll get a notification via, I can't remember, text or email saying, hey, Sam just submitted a work order. He's got a, you know, someone stole his toilet. All right. So um, you'll get that. You don't have to be in the software to get notified of all the key things. Okay. Key, key events. Um, uh, notes, you can keep running, running notes on all, on this tenant, Sam, and you type in there, hit save. It goes down here. You've got a list of notes. So we tr track notes, um, application questions, um, um, properties he's applied for, and do you smoke? His answers were yes. And again, this was just some test stuff. Um, so anyway, we, um, that's the, uh, a very, very quick high level overview. Um, and I don't think there's anything under the gear icon here to show you. This is for this, this is kind of like the setup. Um, um, accounting, no, late fees, no user stripe. I'm trying to hit, make sure I covered everything. Here's where you can link to your top loop. Um, automation, uh, credit reporting, you can require for all your tenants. So you have a lot of options here. If you want to upcharge, uh, we, we have a $5 charge for credit reporting. If you want to upcharge, let's say a dollar that comes to you, um, then you can make a dollar a month. If you have a hundred tenants, you can make a hundred dollars a month um, just on credit reporting if you require it or let tenants choose to opt in. Um, uh, you know, send a text when a, when a work order is added. This is some of all the automation stuff. Um, we can send invoice reminders, email late invoice reminders if that's checked. Uh, auto syndicate out your properties if that's checked. Um, uh, and that's where I can connect to my QuickBooks um, and move out charges. This is nice. You can add unlimited move out charges. So when, when you do move a tenant out, these, these will be available for you to quickly pick and say, oh, yeah, listen, I'm going to charge you for this uh, cleaning maintenance uh, for $125 when he moves out every time he moves out. Okay. Um, so that's, that's it. I, you know, like I said, I'm going quick on this. Um, we do have bank feeds uh, available that's uh, in testing right now. It should be released next week. Uh, we'll read in your bank feeds directly from your bank and um, you can set rules on those bank feeds. So like if you have some Airbnb or some vacation rentals and you get your uh, Airbnb, uh, you know, we'll do that. Your deposits into your bank automatically. So when you see that Airbnb from, from uh, into your uh, you know bank account, you can set a rule. Say hey, if it says Airbnb, I want you to split out whatever the amount is. You know, I want eighty-five dollars to go to cleaning, and then the balance to go to my rent income. You know, uh, account. So we have a lot of features. That's all in testing now. Like I said, it should be out next week. So, um, Kelsey, I'm going to we're going to do a Q and A. I don't know if um, um, you want me to 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 share my screen with the PowerPoint. Sure. It was just, there's a little Q and a with a quick overview. It's not, it's not yeah. really yeah. Uh, that much, yeah. but uh, uh, we're, so let me, let me do this. Yeah. Pull this over here and then let me just present that. Should be that last yeah. slide outside of our pricing. Yeah. You should see it. Yes. Okay. So this is our basic uh, plans. We have a, a basic plan and we have a standard and then we have an enterprise. Um, you know, we won't go into much. Basic is really basic. Uh, you, you really, all you get for support is FAQs and, and tr uh, uh, training videos. You don't really get personal uh, support after the initial onboarding. It's really meant for the really small units. This is the most uh, used, but since we came out with enterprise, a lot of people move into enterprise. QuickBooks is available for all three of them. Um, and then, um, uh, so that's it. We'll leave it for Q and A. Um, I know we kind of went over a lot, some quick, maybe some, some not so. So we'll let you guys uh, bounce us around with questions if you have any. And I, love I am super impressed. It's a, it's an awesome program. We are currently using a property management system that is web-based. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming if we're web-based, that if we chose to switch over to your program, there's an easy way to transfer all of our current data and information. We do, we do convert data. Um, 
typically we convert we can convert everything the thing that's questionable that we usually don't convert is the accounting because it's so one system is so different usually than the others but there are some exceptions to that we can import your chart of accounts that's pretty straightforward but when it gets into your invoices and um, um, bills and payments and how they link them together we that gets very tricky and we don't usually touch that just because it's finance and it's you know it's critical to to not have any issues with that but yes for the most part we can transfer your data um, and that's uh, you know owners buildings properties whatever definitely like all of your uh, business data should be able to go in there uh, once it comes down to the accounting part that he was talking about uh, we do have an incredibly incredibly easy backdating system we're already six months into the year uh, so given that you want to catch up and uh, you know as long as we have your active leases in place we have a record on where they stood um, on, on backdated already recorded payments um, so uh, your accounting can catch up very easily um, uh, and then was there any other questions in regards to uh, import? Um, not necessarily import, but accounting-based. I Does your system provide for issuing 1099s? We do. We do provide we do. 1099s, both owner and vendor. Basically, how it's laid out is we print on the 1099 template. You would provide the 1099 actual template, and we would be able to print and fit accordingly. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You, you, yeah, you have to, yeah, because they have to be original from the IRS, otherwise there's fines involved. So, yeah, you just put in your printer and we print it on top, you know, the data. Fabulous, fabulous. And then are there up, up charges? I'm sorry, I've got a wild animal here in the background. <laughs> are, there, are there up charges for the added services like um, the 1099s, the so background check? off that stuff, criminal backgrounds, et cetera. Absolutely. So we actually, something I really love about properties are if you're going to put us up competitively as far as pricing is, we have a very flat fee kind of structure. What you see um, are our flat fee regular subscriptions based on the amount of units that you have. And the only feature add-ons that you'll see um, are the electronic uh, uh, uses, uh, being able to add on bank accounts or users, those are no uh, additional fees. Things like 1099s, again, no added fees, those are all included. Um, I think that's definitely something that makes us, uh, you specified screening, there are charges for screening. Uh, we work particularly with Tenant Magic. There's a lot of bonuses on why we chose to uh, partner with Tenant Magic above all else. Their online uh, application and screening process is a two in one. So it's uh, application and screening in one. Um, it is completely tenant paid and free to you. Um, so your tenant paid through Tenant Magic is thirty-seven fifty, and you have the ability to add any assessed management fees on top of that. It's really great. Um, in addition to you being able to uh, set up specified requirements, or, or I should say, uh, what would it be called when you criteria minimum criteria? Criteria. Thank you. Yeah, when you kind of specify the criteria, uh, whether it's uh, you know bankruptcies, uh, you don't want to accept bankruptcies, it'll auto reject them. Um, they also have the ability to continue to use their application for 30 days if for any reason you were to reject them they at that 3750 that they just paid goes longer uh, than that first rejection and they're able to submit both their application and screening to any other property uh, of interest so there's a lot that we offer within just our tenant application and screening but it's 3750 for both uh, totally applicant paid awesome thank you love 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 the program and the benefits it's really impressive yeah. So if you do want to learn any more, I know he had given a brief demo. Um, I'm usually, uh, I, I'm, I'm chatty Kathy over here. I pretty much give the really dense overviews. If you're at all interested in seeing what there is more to offer, you and I can come into another one of these uh, person to person, do a little personalized demo, and we can specify any questions and show you how that works in our software. What I think we provide above all else is the ability for you to be able to manage on your own uh, and manage your way. Uh, we have a lot of work workarounds and things in our system that will uh, provide you the way to manage how you'd like. Um, so we can go in there and assure that we're providing all of your needs. And, and one other plug in I'll throw in, um, we do have a reseller program um, where, um, um, well, 
we do have a resale program. If you think you if there's any interest in that uh, on the on the business model for that, um, just want to let you know we do have that, and that's uh, that's available too. So. And, and, and I'm a little bit less uh, uh, overviewed on the reseller program. If that is more of your course of action, I would reach out to Keith on that one. Of course, reach out to me for everything, and I'll make sure to connect you with the right, right parties here. But um, we offer that 15-day free trial, so you guys get the opportunity to kind of play around and really fill it out. Um, so if you are interested in that, please contact me or Keith, and we'll make sure to get you set up there. Um, and uh, we can follow up there with seeing transitioning, um, you know, full, full import onboarding. Um, and of course, uh, we offer uh, regular training and support uh, if needed. We even have an accountant based uh, training platform if need needed to assist with accounting issues. I have a question uh, regarding this uh, reseller program and um, I'll give a scenario and see if it fits in. Let's say I, um, we, uh, you know, I, I buy a property and then um, I lease it up, I set up the management and stuff like that. I then want to transfer that property. I want to sell it and transfer the accounting to the new owner. Uh, and that could, could I use it as an incentive for him that, you know, okay, fine, I'm, I'm transferring this, this particular uh, software to you for you to manage. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it to you for 15 days for you to try out uh, and see if you like it or, you know, at least it will give you time to transition and give you everything that you need once I've sold the property to you. Can I use that reseller program in such a way? You, you, you you could and and what would what would happen if if i understand your scenario correctly if you had this the you were doing it first under under your account in properties are and, and if you are a reseller mm -hmm. and and you resell properties are to this other person uh company or person mm -hmm. whatever um then yes and you sell that company or that property you, you want to transfer that property to their uh, it's already in properties are so yes we can transfer that property to that other person and everything is there that you've been putting in everything is there all already for that new company slash person yes. yeah but if I, if I have like say five properties and properties are and I'm selling just one um, correct now, would, would that transfer over to a fee free uh, free 15 day trial to the new owner or do I have uh, to pay for no, no, no. They can have a free 15 day trial too. Um, and then you would, um, they would not see that property though until you actually transferred it. So, um, but once you transfer it, or once we transfer it to them, then, then they can see it. But during the 15 day trial, they can put in any real data or dummy data. It doesn't matter because it stays there even after the trial. It doesn't, we, during the trial, whatever they put in stays there. It also yeah, suggests they're not able to see the data, right? I, I'm sorry, I asked that again. They will not be able to see the data. For example, if I'm selling the property to him, to a person, um, I want them to be able to see the rent roll. I want them to be able to say communicate to the tenant saying, "Hey, I'm the new landlord. Um, you know, from now on, pay your bills to you know, yes." To this Basically, the trigger is the, the, the switch that switches that is when we move it over to them. So uh, you're asking, can they see it? It depends on when. If they started a trial and, and we didn't move that property, that one property over to them yet, then uh -huh. they can't see it, of course. And then when you say, okay, please move, please move my, my high rise apartment, penthouse, uh, you know. Basically, until they're doubling, active. Yes, then we can move that over to them and then all of a sudden they see it. Okay, and they get a 15 day to try it out. Correct. And, and I would Correct. suggest even leading them to me first. Um, while the, the trial is a phenomenal use, um, it, their ability to actually walk through with me. Um, there's a lot of, you know, features that you can't see that we mentioned to you guys today that are technically invisible. There's a lot of automated things that um, I think would be. So if you are uh, sending anybody our way, whether it's you're wanting to introduce them to trial, I, I, I would suggest trying to introduce them to me for a demo, then move into trial. 
Um, now, can I, um, another question is, and, and let, let's say I buy a property that has 20 buildings. Um, now I'm going to split these buildings into 10 individual properties, which is two buildings each. And then I'm going to sell out two buildings each to different investors. Um, how would that work? Can I kind of, uh, am I able to parcel out the accounts within the system or uh, it's just one property? No, it, it would be the same way. So you can have, uh, we can transfer the buildings and the related properties um, to, uh, to, to the person. So for example, on my building here, um, you have, let me show you my, my, my uh, Bradley Square Mall. For my Bradley Square Mall, I have nine properties tied to that mall. Or if you want to look at it this way, I can do it this way too. Um, these, uh, I just do Bradley Square Mall. So all of these properties, suites, all my suites in the mall are in, you know, I can transfer just one property or I can transfer the whole building with all the properties uh, if I'm selling the whole building with all the properties in there. And then all, all these records, accounting records, leases, whatever it's related, would, tr would be transferred over as well. Okay, so I can, now these, uh, what I see on the screen now, each could be, could be parceled out as a separate property, but while I'm managing it, I'm managing it as one property. Okay. Yeah, we can, we can, we can split just one out if you needed to. Okay. And when we run financial reports, you uh -huh. can run financial reports on a single property, like Suite 400, like a P and L mm -hmm. for on Suite 400, or you can do a P and L on Bradley Square Mall and see what all of these did for a given period of time. Either okay, way. because because let's let's say let's say I develop a condo uh, property, uh -huh. and the condo in the building, and then. I can actually show them financials for just say, you know, if you buy one condo, these are your financials. If you buy three, these are your financials. And if you buy them all, these are your financials. Yes. Yeah. If I went to, if I went over here, I'll just do a real quick. A P and L is most common. If I run a P and L report, I can do a date range. Let me just grab a, you know, big date range. I have a lot in here and we'll pick up to here. So you can pick, you can pick um, all properties or one property, uh, mm -hmm. or you can do um, a building. If I want to do just my Bradley Square Mall, let's see if we got mm -hmm. all that stuff done. That's, okay, so I, you know, again, I don't have a lot of data, but this is for my all, all of my buildings. I mean, just for Bradley Square Mall, or I can do just one property like my Florida condo, um, do that. And then this will be for my just one property for the Florida condo, you know. Um, so yeah, you could do it. You could do it um, property or just owner if you want to do owner. So you can tie all your uh, whatever buildings or properties you tie to a particular owner. You can run uh -huh. this report just for one owner, no matter all his properties or buildings. So yeah, there's a lot of flexibility with how you do the financials. Yeah, okay. So, so like sticking to this now. Uh, you know, say this owner has got 10 properties. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to run financial reports, and what interested me was it calculates the cap rate and cash on cash. Um, so I can run a report saying if you buy one property, you this is your cap rate and this is your cash on cash. If you buy all 10, this is your cap rate, this is your cash on cash. I can generate reports like that, right? Correct. Now, the 10 would have to be tied to a single building and we would we would run that report on the building which would include those 10 but yeah but if yeah, i'm selling a portfolio let's say i'm selling a portfolio with 10, 10 duplexes can i do that <clears throat> yes well okay let me let me let me just clarify if i was if, if I want to run it on individual property, that's easy. We can do that now. That's what I just showed you. If I want to run it on multiple su uh, suites, then or mo just like three properties, then I have to tie those three properties to 
a, a certain building, so I can run the report on that building. If, See, if, I, if I run the report, owner. I'm sorry? If I tie it to one owner, not one building, can that be done? Yes, you can do by owner too. If you don't want to do building, you can do owner is the other option too. Yep. So if, if I have an owner who owns 10 uh, duplexes, um, I can tie it to him and then say all 10 duplexes together, this is the cap rate and this is the cash on cash. Exactly. So here, here I'm choosing just the owner. Okay. So that's going to be uh, obviously Florida Condo is involved in that, but there's other, um, there's other uh, properties that Kyle owns that's also mm -hmm. including these numbers. Yep. So you can do it by property, owner, or building, how you want to group okay. them. I think that that would be really useful once uh, the investment group starts accumulating assets. Um, we can we can do a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Can and we back course, when, uh, Go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm, I was just gonna ask, um, clearly Pre is much brighter than I am, which he is, but can we back up just half a second and can you give me a brief explanation of what the quote resale program is and what, what we can do with that and how we use it? A reseller program, I'll give you a, a one, a, we have a reseller in Africa. And so he is, has a reseller account with Properties R. And so we, we sell Properties R to him for a certain amount, okay? And then he can have all of his customers signing up for Properties R through him. Um, and it's actually, he has a different company called ProHapa. So he has a bunch of, uh, you know, customers uh, signing up for ProHapa, but we're, they're using basically our software in the back end and he charges them whatever he wants. So that's how a resale typically program typically works. So you buy it from us at a, one rate, and some people call it a white label. Um, and then some people, you know, you do, some people refer to it as just a reseller program. So basically you would buy properties are at a certain rate from us, and then you can resell it basically to, you know, uh, anybody, and it it's all falls under your umbrella. So it may Brilliant. or may not fit. Okay. You. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think that would make more sense to us too. Um, in the sense, we could have say Ohio Investments management, where individual um, landlords can still uh, plug in and use it for their individual properties. Correct. Yep. And then they would be like your. Uh, now there's two flavors of the of the. I don't. I want to complicate it, but there's two flavors. The one that's using in Africa, Pro Hopper. He actually formed another company called Pro Hopper, uh, and it means something. I can't remember what he told me it meant, but um, but so but they run all the frontline support. I mean, he's like a company just using our product to sell. Okay, so that's one scenario. In, 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 as a, the other side of that is just just a reseller where you get a reseller a kickback fee for reselling it, but you have no no you don't do any support you don't go out and do any sales. Uh, I mean, you talk word of mouth is kind of deal, uh, but because um, you get you get you get a commission, you get a kickback. But that's uh, other than that, that's all you do. So that's what they call just a plain reseller or a uh, white label is more of what we do in Africa. It kind of falls under the same reseller concept, but it depends on your how much role you want to play. Um, as you guys are investors and, and agents and brokers, um, I don't know that you want to get involved with supporting, you know, customers that sign up. You'd rather just, I think, whether to say, um, hey, 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 Sam, go call Properties R and tell them I sent you kind of deal. And then if that pans out, then we kick you send you back. But um, yeah. That's just a reseller, yeah, plain reseller. But we yeah, have it's a discussion for another time, but uh, yes, it's definitely I'll keep it in mind. Uh, a lot of possibilities there. Yeah, and, and no, nobody else does that. I, I know that Appfolios, Billiams, uh, Rent, Rent Tech, all those others, none of them have a, um, a reseller program 
a white label reseller program. They won't allow it. So, um, okay. Well, anybody else has? Uh... Well, I see that we have Alicia and a 554 phone number joining us. I'm just curious if you guys want to hop in and introduce yourselves and if you have any questions or if you have any comments for us on the information you got today. Um, this is Alicia. I'm relatively new in the real estate business and having left the corporate space a few years ago or two years ago. And um, right now I'm just kind of looking at different options um, and I thought this was a, a nice tool. So I'm glad that I was able to attend today. So thank you for doing it. Thank you. Yay, and we hope that you keep attending because we're gonna try and bring lots of good information weekly, right Pri? Yes, the, the next uh, uh, webinar is on 10.31 and that's going to be really interesting. Wonderful. Well, we really thank you guys so much for joining us today. If for any reason you feel like you want to move forward with any more information on properties are, um, please reach out to Keith or myself. Um, if, if somehow I could get your information, we can send you guys a, a digital uh, business card, but we are here to help. So reach out anytime. Keith and Kelsey, thank you so very much. And Kelsey, if you could um, make sure that we get the recording, my, um, director of our property management dis division was going to be attending today and clearly something must have come up since she did not so i'm going to want to get this recording in her hands so she can kind of hear what you offer comparatively to what we're using and then i can put her in direct contact with you if she thinks it's something that that may work better for us. Absolutely, and uh, I could do one of two things. I can send you, of course, this this recording of this uh, overview, you know, during COVID, uh, and or I can also send you just basically a pre-recorded demo um, of our software. It's a little bit more thorough of an overview of what Keith had done. Uh, do you have a preference? Should I send both? Yeah, sending both would be awesome. You That'd be it. fabulous, thank you. you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you guys again for all the yeah, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say thank you guys again so much for the awesome info. And Leisha, I'm so glad you joined us. Thank you. Um, yeah, Kelsey, if you can uh, send me the recording, then I can I can put it on our website so that people can who missed it today you got um, it. can listen to it. And then I'll also put it on our group on Facebook um, and um, you know other places that <clears throat> We advertise, so you know it's widespread and people see it. Okay. Sounds good. And Thanks for the opportunity. And if you can transfer back the host to me, I. Oh yeah, I. Uh, it's under Keith, actually, not me. Yeah, I don't. I sent it to you, Kelsey. I didn't know if you had to stop the oh. recording, so I didn't want to mess that Let's up. Let's go so ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and actually.